Hi and welcome to another very exciting quick tip tutorial. Today we're going to discuss um, live rendering in Xcode and here's a little example of what we are going to build. So this is not an image, it is just a UI view and we can see a circular shape in it. And if we have a look at the attributes inspector, then we can see that there are two new properties here, our attributes that we can adjust, which is the background color and the line width of um, the border of this circle. So I could actually adjust the border of this circle just by adjusting the control here. And I can also change the color, which is pretty useful for um, different scenarios. And you can use this, um, this view for also for different scenarios like a background for, um, for an avatar image or user image or whatever. So this is pretty useful, especially if you're working together with designers. Um, who would like to change something um, in the design without having to write any line of code. So you can expose a lot of properties that way and we are going to discuss how this is done in a second. Let me just give you a quick update on Swift Tutorial Conference. Next week you're going to um, be informed about um, when the conference is going to take place in September. And let me just give you a quick um, bit of information about the STC app award. Um, if you want to participate, all you need to do is write an email with an app store link to um, the app with which you want to participate to awards at swifttutorialconference.net. And if your app isn't free, just make sure to include a promo code with that email. And if you are one of the winners of STC App Award, um, then you will not only get the conference bundle for free, you will also get the chance to um, showcase your app on the conference website and you will also get some nice surprises. But I don't want um, to get into detail about that right now. So this is the update on Swift Tutorial Conference. So if you haven't registered um, already, do it now. It's completely free and we're going to have a lot of fun um, and also make sure if you want to participate in the app awards, then you also need to be registered for the conference. But now let's get started with our quick tip tutorial of today. So I'm going to close that and reopen Xcode just now. And we're going to create a nice and simple single view application. So we create a new Xcode project. We choose the single view application template and we're just calling that live rendering. And live rendering was already introduced with iOS 8, but uh, in my experience, many developers don't use it yet. And I'm going to show you how simple it uh, really is. And what we need to do first is go into our main storyboard and uh, bring up a new UI view to our view controller. And we're just positioning that in the center and maybe use the um, another size here with the size inspector. Let's give it 300 by 300 pixels, move it back to the center. And then we will set some auto layout constraints. So it always um, stays in the center of the screen. So press control on the keyboard. Um, let's center it horizontally. Let's center it vertically and also make sure that we have uh, a constant for width and height. So with that done, what we can do is create a new subclass of UI view. So I click on my view controller and press command and on the keyboard, make sure I have selected iOS source and select a Cocoa Touch class, click next. And we're simply calling that circle view and make sure this is going to be a subclass of UI view. And then we click next and create that file. And now we can actually get rid of this um, implementation of um, draw of the draw rect function. And the first step in making a class available for live rendering is simply putting um, IB at IB designable right at the top of the class definition here where we write class circle view and let it inherit from UI view. So now that we did that, we can actually go back to our storyboard, um, connect our UI view with our new class. So let's go to the identity inspector and enter circle view. And then we can bring up the assistant editor 
And instead, using the jump bar, instead of keeping that on automatic, we will choose manual. This is our project live rendering. There we have a group live rendering. And then we can choose the circle view. And everything we do now here, we can see the effects right here in Interface Builder. So what we need to do is, first of all, define a circle layer. So let's create a new variable for that, which is going to be a circle layer. And this is going to be a CA shape layer object. And for the background color, we now want to do, uh, create a new property, which is circle um, layer color. And since we are going to make this, or we want to expose this property to, um, to interface builder, we need to specify its type here. So we use UI color and we will give that a default value of UI color let's say dark gray color. And all we need to do now to actually expose that to Interface Builder is um, to write at IB inspectable right in front of our property definition. And if we now click on our UI view and switch to the, identity, uh, to the attributes inspector, then you can see that we have a property here exposed and we can simply use it to choose a color. But since we're not drawing anything yet, um, anything that we would choose here wouldn't affect our, um, our real view in Interface Builder. So um, let's continue writing some code here. And before we get started with more properties, let's first of all define all of the um, functions that we really need. Well, let's start with the init function, um, which is just init with frame. And we should call super init and uh, pass along the frame. Um, and we should also make sure to override that. So override. And if we use um, the init function, we also need to uh, create an init with coder, which is always required. So let's also call super init, um, not with frame. Let's call super init with a coder and the decoder. And that's it. And then what we also are going to need is um, to use the um, layout subviews function. So let's also override that and let's call super layout subviews. And then we can call maybe a function that we, mm, let's say layout circle, let's call it that way. And then let's write that function layout circle. And here we go. And this is actually where we will draw our circle. And to do that, the first thing we actually want to do is check if our circle layer already exists or not. So we'll check if our circle layer is equal to nil, we need to create it. So uh, we will use the circle layer and simply um, create a CA shape layer object and initialize that. And then we will use the layer of our view and add a sub layer. And this is of course the circle layer. And we can't see anything yet, but that doesn't matter. Um, we are going to create a rect and draw within this rect. And since we are going to um, uh, define a property which allows us to um, increase or decrease the border width, we will also write um, another property at the top of our, uh, of our class, which we are going to call um, line width or border width. And we want to make this IB inspectable as well, as well. So let's create that property. Let's call it border width, which is going to be a CG float and we want to give that a default value of one. And what we also need to do now is create a little bit more code here in a layout circle. So let's first of all define a rect by using CG rect inset. Um, and we will then use for the rect the bounds of our view. And then for the difference in X and Y direction, we will simply use our uh, border width, divide that by two, and again here, border width divided by two. And for our path that creates our shape, um, we are going to use a UI Bezier path. So Bezier path here. And we are going to use oval in rect. And um, since we've defined that rect, we can simply pass along that information and then we'll actually draw a circle in our rect, which um, uh, we will see in a second. And we will now define a background color for our circle layer. So we'll simply use the fill color. 
And then we can already use the circle layer color and convert that to a CG color since this is required here. And then we also have this line width around for our border. So again, we use the um, circle layer, use the line width property here and pass along our border width. And all we need to do now to actually draw our, um, our circle is to use our um, circle layer again and define its path and we will simply pass along our path that we created and again uh, convert that to a CG path. Again, this is required. And as soon as uh, we did that, Interface Builder actually live renders our view. And this is pretty cool. And now all we need to do is to make sure that updates we make in Interface Builder um, also take place. And to make sure of that, what we want to do is write another function right here. Let, let me give us some space here. Um, so let's just do that. Um, so here we go. And we're going to call this a function update circle properties. And we're going to call this every time that we change our properties values. And we'll first of all check if the um, circle layer is not equal to nil. And if, it, if that is the case, we need to um, use our circle layer. And we have a fill color, so we need to use the circle layer color, again, as a CG color. And also we want to make sure um, that we pass along the line width, so circle layer, um, and it's line width. Let's update that with the border width here. And to actually call this update circle properties function, I'm going to copy that. And let's move to the top here. So we are going to put some curly braces after our default value and uh, make this a computed property. And by using the did set um, keyword, we can actually define what happens when a new value was set for our property. And what we want to do is call our update circle properties function. And we'll simply do the same thing here when we um, update our border width. So again, we use did set and update our circle properties. And with that done, let's see what actually happens if we select our um, view and have a look at the attributes inspector. Let's first of all set a, a different color, which works quite nicely. And let's also increase the border width here. And as you can see, our uh, by increasing the border width, our circle shrinks. And if I set that to the default value of one again, we have our nice and big circle again. So I could change that to actually any color I want. So let's just try that. And this works quite nicely. So have fun exploring live rendering in Xcode and also try to expose some properties where it is useful um, to interface builder. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.